Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good. We got Whitney Day, Brian, and uh, we got three big, big Whitney races. Absolutely, Matt. Hey, can we, can we, do, folks, do you mind if we jump on our soapbox? You probably do, but we're going to do it. I know Matt feels the same way about me in this instance, which is kind of rare these days, Matt, but hey, we agree on this one. I've seen so many people complaining about the five horses, only five horses entered for the Whitney. These are five of the best horses in America. Uh, you could have some 30, 40 to one shots in here to get in the way of things, but uh, I am just fine with five of the best uh, horses in America being in the same race. Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna get t-shirts made, Brian. That, that, that says uh, it doesn't have to be a big field to be a great field. And they're all millionaires. Four of them are grade one winners. They're, they're you know, one of them's a champion from last year. They're five of the best horses in the country right now. What could be better than that? You want, you want to go round, round up four horses from random horses from the barn so that you can say you got nine in there? Go ahead. No, that that that's silly. Yeah, and, and Matt, I, I think a lot of people are, are confused with the great horses of the 1970s. There were all kinds of short fields in the 1970s in these huge races where these big horses ran. It wasn't like a firm and spectacular bid. And uh, Seattle Slough and Secretariat were running against 12 horse fields all the time. They weren't, folks. Anyway, really good field. The Whitney obviously is going to be our headliner. I want you to rem uh, remind you to please do subscribe to our YouTube channel on here on Horse Racing Nation. Uh, it really helps us out. Matt and I appreciate you doing that. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss another episode of Horse Center ever. Matt, we got three grade ones to talk about Saratoga, led by the Whitney, the favorite, the morning line favorite. We weren't sure who the morning line favorite was going to be, but uh, David Aragona came down with Nick's go. And I, I think that makes sense because of the way the race is set up. It looks like Nick's go, the six to five morning line favorite breaking from the four hole is the speed of this Whitney. Uh, yeah, Brian, I, I don't think you can look at this race in terms of the pace scenario in any other way. Uh, you know, that his performance uh, in the Corn Husker just reaffirmed what we saw from uh, Nick's go last year in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And then at the beginning of this year in the Pegasus World Cup, when he's going around two turns with his speed, which is uh, which is real, which is real speed and his stamina to carry that speed around two turns. Um, uh, he's the only one that has that kind of speed uh, in this five horse field. Um, and, and to me, it gives him a tremendous advantage uh, in the Whitney. Yeah, and I think that's why he will be favored over Maxfield, or at least that's why he was made the morning line favorite. We could still see Maxfield because Maxfield is always so well respected, always so uh, well bet in all of his races. But as far as Knicks go, you're exactly uh, right, Matt. He will be on the lead. Uh, there can be little doubt about that. He is the speed of the race, the controlling speed. All four of the other horses have a measure of tactical speed, maybe, maybe Swiss Skydiver being the most obvious of them, but they all like to stalk or come from up just a little bit off the pace. But even Maxfield, I think, Matt, has the ability to stay pretty close when he needs to. So this is not a field where Nick's go is going against a bunch of closers. So in that way, I think it makes it a little bit more interesting race. I do have a few questions about the morning line favorite, Matt. Nick's go only had one race at Saratoga. It was pretty bad. It was a long time ago. Also, he drops Lasix after getting Lasix in the Cornhusker. Yeah, and, and you know, that Lasix question is, is always going to be there um, uh, in these, uh, these kind of races. And, you know, uh, it, it's out there. Yeah, he, he's the only one who raced with Lasix in his last race. So I, that, that's a question mark for me. And Saratoga can be a quirky racetrack. So those are two reasons 
why I think that uh, there is the possibility that Nick's go maybe isn't quite as good as a few of his finest performances, but we'll see the obvious horse that would buy for favoritism in here, Matt, is Maxfield. Maxfield's seven of eight lifetime. His only loss, let's talk about Lasix real quick again. His only loss was his first try without Lasix when he went out to California for the mile and a quarter goal, uh, big cap. It wasn't his best race. It wasn't a bad race. He finished third that day. But since then, he's had two races without Lasix, and he looked awfully good at Churchill Downs. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, uh, dominated those races at Churchill Downs in the Ali Sheba, in the Stephen Foster. Uh, and, and as you said, that only loss uh, uh, was making the trip out to the West, go at a mile and a quarter. Um, you know, uh, fantastic resume for Maxfield. Yeah, absolutely. The Son of Street Sense trained by Brendan Walsh, Matt. I, I personally think He's the best horse in this field. And I, I think that's saying something because I have a lot of respect top to bottom for every single horse in this field. I kind of cringed when you said there's four grade one winners out of five in here, all millionaires, because by my standards, I do think of as a grade one horse. I think that's how good this uh, uh, field is. And I can't remember a race where we've ever seen five millionaires all the horses in the race are millionaires. I can't remember a race where we've seen every single horse in the race a millionaire. Uh, there, there might be somebody that can correct me that I'm forgetting, but uh, I can't re recall such a race. Anyway, Maxfield, I think he's the best horse in the race. I've, I've believed him in a long time since, uh, since his two-year-old season. And this is the time where he can prove that he's the best dirt horse in America. Uh, I think he has a big shot in here. I think the reason he would get beat is if Nick's go is all alone running his race. Yeah. Now, next on the list is Silver State. Silver State is not getting a lot of respect on the uh, morning line. Six straight wins. He won the Met Mile last time. He's four to one on the morning line. Yeah, I mean, that win in uh, the Met Mile was certainly his signature victory. Uh, um, Steve Asmussen has done wonderful things with uh, Silver State. He, Steve Asmussen has done this with older horses before. They've gotten better and better. Silver State uh, is, is one of them, um, I guess. Uh, you know, somebody has to be higher odds in this field. And I guess Silver State um, is that one because maybe uh, uh, people question whether the mile and eighth is pushing the limits of his distance preferences. Although, you know, the race before the Met Mile was a victory for Silver State in the Oaklawn handicap, which was a mile and an eighth. Yeah, and he rallied late in that mile and eighth race to do it. I, I, I don't have as many reservations about him uh, liking a mile and eighth. I, I, I do worry a little bit about him though in the race setup in that he's down on the inside with the speed outside him. I'm not sure if this race sets up as well. I pick Silver State as my top pick. I pick by my standards as my second pick. I want a lot of money in the Met Mile. But Silver State, I, I worry this is just not the same kind of spot that the Met Mile is in. He, like pretty much everybody in the race, maybe say Nick's go or maybe even the Philly Swiss Skydiver certainly has something to prove in here as far as can they beat the very best on the square. The Met Mile came close to proving that, but this one's even tougher. Silver State, hey, he was a promising uh, early on. He was a promising three-year-old last year. Didn't quite connect, but uh, yeah, he's gotten good. I'll also remind people that he was good going uh, different distances from seven furlongs to nine furlongs as Matt stated in the Oakland Handicap. Next on the list, Matt is the champion, the, the lone champion. I feel, I feel pretty confident in saying that there will be another champion that comes out of this race. But as of now, Swiss Skydiver is the only champion in the five-horse field. She didn't run a race last time in the Apple Blast. And there were reasons that we found out uh, after the race why this happened. She's been waiting to run for a while, Matt. She sure has. Uh, you know, uh, uh, she just has not had good luck uh, since she uh, debuted and out in California and won the Beholder Mile and looked like uh, Swiss Skydiver was on her way to another fantastic campaign. Uh, um, you know, she just was not ready for a top performance in the Apple Blossom. And then since then, it's been bad luck 
more bad luck and bad luck. Uh, most recent bad luck was uh, 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 when uh, Kenny McPeak's barn was quarantined because of uh, uh, a herpes equine uh, uh, outbreak uh, <clears throat> in the barn, uh, uh, in McPeak's barn. And now finally, uh, his horses are able to run. Uh, the Whitney is not the spot that McPeak wanted to bring Swiss Skydiver back. He's bringing her back in in a pretty tough spot. Yeah, it's absolutely a tough spot. <clears throat> but but we said the exact same thing before last year's Preakness when she uh, she went out authentic and and beat him in in that huge race last year. I think she's a terrific filly. I, I think people are underestimating her a little bit just because of what happened in her last start. I like a few things about Swiss Skydiver, Skydiver, maybe more than Silver State, because I consider them somewhat uh, similar in their running style in that Swiss Skydiver is very proven uh, going a distance, certainly more so than Silver State. She's also proven at Saratoga with a very impressive win last year in the Alabama. What do you think about the jockey change? She's had Robbie Alvarado for a while now, Matt. She gets a rad in the Whitney. Yeah, I think that certainly uh, is a plus. You know, uh, Irad is uh, the, you know, the 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 king of uh, Saratoga jockeys at this point. Um, you know, that that has to be considered a plus. You have to be worried about the fact that uh, Swiss Skydiver has not run since April. However, heading into uh, uh, this kind of field, right. Yeah, and, and in her favor, the last time she had a similar layoff was when she won the Beholder Mile this year, and she certainly looked good. Her race that she was supposed to be in, I think she would have won the Shoe V, was only last week. So it, the, uh, the quarantine threw her off by a week, but certainly, as Matt's saying, put her in a much tougher race. The fifth horse in the field, Matt, in a long shot. The long shot on the board by my standards. I guess he was kind of a long shot in the Met Mile when he was 8-1. to one. Uh, but uh, he ran a heck of a race coming down the middle of the track and running the very best late in that race, actually a good second in the Met Mile. He was a good second in the Whitney last year. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I think that's the most significant thing to make note of in here. And yes, uh, 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 an unexpected second uh, in, the, in the Met Mile last year in, in a, a super tough field. And yeah, uh, he was second in the, Whitney last year behind uh, Improbable. Uh, you, I don't think you can overlook uh, uh, by my standards in this race either uh, to make a, a, a late run down the stretch. No, certainly if you're looking at the morning line odds, and, and I think he will be the fifth choice in here, by my standards does offer value. I did pick him for second in the Met Mile, so he didn't surprise me that day, but I do think we we started to touch on it with Silver State. I do think that by my standards is a horse who likes a certain distance. And I think nine furlongs is the absolute ceiling of his of what he's best at. I actually think he's better at a mile. I think he's uh, better at a mile and 16th than he is at nine furlongs. He's a son of Golden Sense, who, of course, won the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile two years in a row. So I worry nine furlongs is just a hair more than he loves. Last year's Whitney was a good field. This is a better field. Uh, and last year, it kind of stuck around on a slower pace behind Improbable. He was second best that day, but uh, I think this one's even tougher. If this was a mile, mile 16th, I'd like him even better. But the value is there on a really, really good horse. Matt, that's five horses in the Whitney. I think it's a great five-horse field. So be it if people disagree with us. Let's, uh, let's jump to the other grade ones in the day, which are really, really good and bigger fields to make people happy. Let's start with the Phillies, the test, seven furlongs. We've been watching a lot of good tests over the years, Matt. And this looks like another one. You have to start the conversation with search results coming off a nice acorn win at Belmont. Yeah, I absolutely do. Uh, uh, five races in uh, her career, four wins. Her only loss was a narrow, narrow defeat in the Kentucky Oaks uh, to uh, Malathot, just a neck defeat uh, in that race. Um, so uh, uh, search, resu search results is going to be a, a, a worthy favorite in here. Um, she's two to one in the morning line. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'd love to get two to one on search results in the test. Yeah, and actually those are our 
the, the odds that I put out, not for the test, but on the morning line, I saw it five to two, a very lukewarm favorite. And I was a little surprised. I mean, there's a lot of horses in here to bet and that speaks of the quality of this field. But uh, yeah, off her form, five to two. There's an old axiom, Matt, that really, really good horses can, can drop down in distance and beat good sprinters. And search results seems like a good candidate for that. Having said that, there's a lot of fast horses in here and she likes to be close to the lead. So it, it might be a tricky spot, but on class, you've got to look at search results as the one to beat. Second choice on the morning line is always Karina. And that might just be the Chad Brown factor. She's the same barn as search results, both trained by Chad Brown. Always Karina looked really good in winning a maiden and allowance in her first two starts, but was beaten as a heavy favorite last time going nine furlongs in the mother goose. Yep, won her first two starts for Chad, uh, second uh, in the in the mother goose. She's one of uh, uh, you know one of a few in here who's got a lot of early speed. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe she didn't want that nine furlongs of the mother goose because that certainly was a little bit disappointing, even though she was a decent second in there. The horse I thought probably would be the second choice uh, is obligatory obligatory has really impressed in her last two lightly raced Philly who likes to come from well back. Uh, she won a big race at Churchill Downs on Kentucky Derby day or Kentucky Derby weekend. And then she came back and really ran a good race to search results in the A Corp. Yep. She won that eight bells um, for Bill Mott uh, at Churchill Downs that you were referring to and uh, you know, running second, behind uh, search results is certainly not a blemish. She's going to get a good setup pace-wise in this race. Yeah, I think so. I think the pace is, is, is strong. It might not be um, a little bit what we talked about last year, uh, last week with the Bing Crosby, uh, but uh, the pace does look strong and obligatory is always a threat to rally. I think another horse who's a real threat to rally, Matt, is super sensational because she, I think she's found her niche here at this kind of distance. She was two for two to start a career at seven furlongs, an impressive winner. The six and a half furlong victory that ride from off the pace last time. Yeah, she, uh, she, uh, she sprung a big one in that victory ride going six and a half furlongs. Uh, got a big fig, her, the best figure, uh, speed figure of her career for Mark Cassie. Yeah, and they had tried to stretch her out before, and that didn't quite work for her, although maybe she had a little trouble here and there in a few races. But at this sprint distance, I, I think it's working out for her now. I do, I do worry, and, and I, I fight myself on this a little bit, but Mark Cassie's record at Saratoga over the last how many years, Matt, has just not been good, and that's continuing this year. So it, 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 I like Super Sensational, but I worry Cassie just doesn't win at the spa. Yeah, it's been that way. I don't, he's not running as many horses up at Saratoga this year as he has in the past, though. That's true. That's true. Another one I think has a big shot, Matt, is another one like always Karina, who's very lightly raised. Her name is Bella Sophia. She also has a good turn of speed. Uh, she was thrown to the Wolves in a very fast stakes race at Belmont in their second career start after a big win. She, I thought she performed pretty well there to be second. She came back with a big allowance win last time, and she should be heading to the test in just the right way. Yeah, another one, uh, another one that's got speed. She won her debut by 11 lengths for Rudy Rodriguez, and then, as you said, went right into stakes company, ran, you know, ran a noteworthy second, uh, uh, particularly when you come and back it up with a nice allowance win. Yeah, yeah, she's she's interesting to me, as is Zajel, Matt. Zajel, I, you know, I guess there's some excuses in her two tries going two turns, one on the dirt, one on the turf. But then she came back to one turn, even though it was nine furlongs last time in the Mother Goose. She pulled off a surprise. She pulled off a surprise, yep, and uh, in the Mother Goose and ran a big race that, uh, with a big speed figure. And, and now this Todd Pletcher runner is listed at six to one on the morning line. Yeah, yeah, it's six to one or eight to one, depending on which morning yeah. line you're looking at. So Zajel probably will have some decent odds in here. Again, you know, we listed her here as the sixth horse I'm mentioning. That, that means there's a lot of good options to bet. Search results may be under two to one. You're going to have some good odds on horses like maybe Bella Sophia and Zajel. 
The last horse I want to mention real quick, Matt, is Illumination uh, for a couple of reasons. Bob Baffert's in the test, which uh, is a little surprising, but um, he, he, got, uh, he, he, he got legal recourse to do so. In Illumination, I think he has a talented filly who's got a lot of speed on the rail. Yeah, it's hard to know uh, what the quality is with Illumination. Um, she broke her maiden in her most recent start, but uh, um, she had been racing in a stakes company for uh, three or four races um, uh, early on. And uh, as I said, broke her maiden uh, in her 2021 debut and now ships out ships out to Saratoga. Baffert won't be coming out to New York with the horse, however. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I think she's got some talent and, and that speaks to her running in those stakes races last year as a maiden two year old. Uh, and this was her first start this year and it was a very impressive maiden win, but it was against maidens out in California on the rail with that freshness and that speed. I think she's the most likely to grab the early lead, but uh, she should be hounded early. All right, Matt, one more grade one that we need to run through here, and that's the million dollar Saratoga Derby. This looks like a race we might see at places like Goodwood or Ascot with all these foreign runners. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of foreign runners. Uh, we've got the winner of the Belmont Derby coming back. We've got some new foreign runners coming over. We've got uh, four horses coming back from that Belmont Derby. We got a big field for you, big field lovers, a field of 11. Yeah, absolutely. A mile three sixteenths on the turf. I, I think this experiment with the uh, big money three-year-old turf races in New York is at least something I appreciate. And there's certainly, I think uh, one of the big goals was to draw foreign horses and that's certainly successful here. Bolshoi Ballet obviously should be the favorite in here. I think he'll be a pretty clear favorite, but again, there are a lot of horses to consider, but Bolshoi Ballet looks like he's gonna be closer to even money than not in here, Matt. Impressive rally down the stretch to win the Belmont Derby, 10 furlongs, he cuts back just a 16th for this Saratoga Derby. Yeah, I don't think the, the, the change in distance is of any significance to, uh, to Bolshoi Ballet or to most of the other uh, Europeans uh, in this field. I don't particularly like any of the other uh, horses that are coming back from the Belmont Derby to uh, uh, turn things around and be able to, to beat uh, Bolshoi Ballet. The question is, are any of the other Europeans able to do that? Yeah, that, that very well could be the question because it looks like there's a lot of potential and talent in those other Europeans. Bolshoi Ballet, if he runs back to his first race in America, I think will be tough. You're right, Matt. Cadillac though, Secret Prospector, State of Rest, Soldier Rising. I can't throw out any of the other four Europeans. They all have things to like. I'm gonna mention Soldier Rising as a longer shot of the group has some really nice form in France, even though it's not against the top company yet. I think he's getting good. And he's been in the Clement barn for a little while. He's getting Irat Ortiz. He's interesting to be on the rail. What else do you see from the uh, European runners? Yeah, there is, uh, there's Cadillac who uh, won a group three at the Kerr in his only start uh, this year. And uh, that was against the quality field um, for a, you know, not a prominent name trainer, but that was an impressive performance. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and secret, again, secret prospector and state of rest. I think all of them are, are interesting horses. I think there's some interesting Americans, though, and I wouldn't just immediately discount them. Du jour, I was worried a mile and a quarter first step up in distance for him would be tough in the Belmont Derby. He ran a good race, just a little short, six without experience in a 16th last, maybe he's a threat. Cellist was one of my long shots that uh, helped me hit a big triple in the Belmont Derby. Cellist is, again, got some speed in a race where there looks to be very little. Uh, King Fury, he's got a lot of turf breeding in there, Matt. We like what he's want, done on dirt. And yes, this time, is on a real turf roll. Any of those interest you, sir? Um, 
I don't, you know, as I said, I think I'm leaning towards the Europeans in this race. Okay. I, I do want to mention King Fury one more time, just because King Fury, uh, uh, King Fury is a dirt horse. He's never run on turf before. There's turf breeding. I think this is a super tough spot uh, to make your turf debut so i'm not uh, i'm not big on his chances here but i think he's a really nice horse i think he's underrated and i think this is an interesting prep for the travers uh running in the million dollar saratoga derby using a million dollar race as a prep matt who do you like best in this race uh yeah and i you know more with king fury i think that's another kenny mcpeak horse that is you know coming out of the quarantine and uh, uh, mcpeak is looking for a spot to get uh, get his uh, horse a race heading into, uh, as you said, into the Travers. It's not the ideal spot that he wanted for the horse, but he needs to get a race uh, into them. Yeah, I, I, I will, I will di differ with you just a little bit more because I know McPeak was talking about this race. Unlike Swiss Skydiver, who was certainly pointed for the shoe V, uh, he was talking about King Fury. Uh, running in this race, even right after the Ohio Derby. So this might have been more of a plan with him than uh, than Swiss Skydiver in the Whitney. All right, folks, we're, we're going to do three great grade one races here at Soga, Saratoga. The Whitney, the Test, the Saratoga Derby. We kind of ran down the fields a little bit in each. Matt, now comes time to make your picks. I want to know who you like. We'll start with the Whitney. That's the big one. Who's your top pick? Who's your second choice? Um, in the Whitney, I am going to go with uh, Nick's go. I, I think that his uh, pace advantage is going to be extremely difficult to overcome. And I'm going to go with uh, probably the long shot in the field for second by my standards. Okay, so favorite on top, long shot on the bottom. Interesting. I'm going to go with two other horses. Why not? They're so they're so good in here. Neither Matt and I are putting Silver State in, who's won six in a row. Shame on us. But I just think Maxfield is the best horse in the race. I want to see Nick's go beat a field like this. Uh, you know, we're flip flopping because I picked him in the Corn Oscar. You tried to beat him in the Corn Oscar. I'm going to try to beat him here in the Whitney. I think Maxfield is the best horse in the race. I think he can make a trip. And I think maybe Swiss Side Diver, maybe Silver State, maybe by my standards, will put a little pressure on Nick's go as he drops Lasix and runs back at Saratoga for the first time in three years off a bad Saratoga performance. I think Maxfield's the best horse in the country. I think he's going to win the Whitney. My second choice will be for some odds. I'm going to go with the Philly. I think she's going to run a much better race than she did in the Apple Blossom. Whether that gets her first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, I'm not sure. She could run big and run fifth in here, but I'm going to use her as a little bit odds in my second spot. How about the test, Matt? Another good race. Yeah, you know, Brian, I have a feeling that uh, with her great record, um, search results, I think search results is the maybe actually a little bit better at shorter distances. So I, I think the test is an interesting spot. I'm going to go with short uh, search results on top and I'm gonna look for a little bit of a better price um, in the second position with Zagel. Okay, you say Zagel, I say Zagel, I'm not sure. But search results, yeah, and that's my question too. And you went the other way. Listen, I, I try to beat the favorites a lot and I realize search results on paper looks like the best, but I wonder, cause I loved her Kentucky Oaks more than any race she's run. And that was two turns at nine for long. So I'm, I'm wondering if she's a little bit better going longer. Maybe you're right and maybe I'm wrong. We'll find out because I think this is a really strong sprint race. And hey, Chad Brown is running her in here for a reason. So more likely that I'm wrong, but I'm gonna try to beat the favorite. I really like the two horses that are lightly raced. I think they're really talented sprinters. Uh, Bella Sophia is the one that interests me the most I like the race she ran in, in, in her one loss, and then I like the way she came back. I think she can sit in second or third behind Illuminate, Illumination and make a big run in this test. She's going to be my top pick. She's got some odds. Uh, always Karina. You know, I could have put just about anybody else, including search results are super sensational. But I think Always Karina is another horse who can bounce back off of that mother goose. So she'll be my second pick in the test. Matt, now we go to a completely different game. A mile 316 on the grass. 
an international affair, truly an international affair. Who do you like in here, sir? As I said, I'm going to go with the uh, with the Europeans. They're going to have to beat uh, Bolshoi Ballet uh, in here again. And my second pick is going to be Cadillac. Yeah, Bolshoi Ballet uh, certainly is the horse to beat. I think he'll be a heavy favorite. I, I am going to I didn't try to beat him in the Belmont Derby. I am going to try to beat him here. I wonder if he's going to run as good a race second time out going up to Saratoga again, coming in for Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore, the horse to beat. I'm going to use him in the second spot because I, I couldn't quite keep them off. Although I thought of putting Chellist in there as a long shot, but my top pick is going to be another long shot. I think soldier rising has every reason in the world. He's coming off longer races. He's caught a lot of wet turf over there in Europe. His sire Frankel preferred a little bit less of the wet stuff. I think soldier rising has a ton of talent. He's been in the Clement barn for a while. He gets Irad. Not sure if I like the rail, but on the other hand, he's got tactical speed in a race without much speed. So Soldier Rising is going to be my pick to upset the Saratoga Derby with the heavy favorite Bolshoi Ballet second. Uh, it should be a great day of racing Saturday at Saratoga, Matt. You're excited. I'm excited. Let me get a party shot from you, my friend. Yeah, great day of racing. I wish everybody good luck. And of course, I want to thank our producer, Tony Badabang, for putting together the show. Absolutely. Thanks to Tony. Thanks to Candace Curtis for putting together the race graphics. Also, we want to thank our sponsor, the best contest site out there. That's Derby Wars. Thanks to them for helping us put together the show each and every week. Matt, next week, we're going to be back talking about uh, a, a little bit of nostalgia while we handicap the big races on the grass from Arlington. It's the end of the year in Chicago, so we have that to look forward to next week. We'll see you right here. Back on Horse Center.